Bryce Green, fresh from New York and the UN, joins us on the mother of all talk shows. Bryce, for those who didn't get the chance to see your address and all should go and look at it after the show, summarize, please, what it was that you told to the nabobs in the United Nations. All right, now, thank you for having me here, George. Uh, what, what I mentioned in front of the UN, uh, I just really went over some of the uh, history and the publicly available facts that we currently have about the Nord Stream pipeline explosion. Uh, I went over the fact that the pipeline, which uh, was a Russian and German pipeline, was designed to closely integrate the economies of Russia and Germany, which is something that the U.S. has been hostile to for a long time. Um, and, but immediately after the pipeline explosion, there was all this speculation about who the primary culprit would be, and universally, almost universally, Western media and Western officials came out to tell the public that it was Russia who blew up their own pipeline. Well, pretty quick, quickly they uh, realized that there was no real motive for Russia to bomb their own pipeline, and Western media organizations settled on a, a pretty, what I believe to be a pretty weak explanation for why Russia would be involved. They said it was some sort of vague reminder from Moscow uh, about just how vulnerable Western energy infrastructure is. Uh, but this had a number of problems with it, namely that Russia had tried to get this pipeline open for a long time, and immediately after the explosion, they rushed to see and price out how much it would be to fix. But the biggest problem was that this explanation ignored the largest and most obvious culprit in the attacks, the United States. Uh, just the prima facie case for the United States is overwhelming. As I said, the U.S. has had a long project of trying to prevent the integration of Russia and Europe. Um, you know, the first NATO Secretary General, which is uh, what I told the UN, uh, Lord Hastings Ismay said that the goal of NATO was to keep the Americans in, the Russians out, and the Germans down. And well, we can see that this war has been an extension of that. Uh, economist Michael Hudson described the start of this war as the U.S. defeating Germany for a third time. And part of that was cutting off Russian gas from uh, German manufacturing. Uh, at the time of the explosion, we were seeing headlines in the press, the Western business-minded economic press, uh, about uh, how German economy was deindustrializing, how they're at a major risk of uh, being sort of priced out of the manufacturing industry worldwide. Uh, and this was uh, exacerbated by the Nord Stream pipeline explosion. Um, and the U.S., uh, they benefited greatly from it. U.S. gas manufacturers are now making billions of dollars by replacing Russian gas uh, that is headed towards Germany. What's more is that if you look beyond the interest, the actual statements of uh, American officials were pretty uh, suggestive of an interest in making sure that the pipeline A didn't go online and B was destroyed. Uh, before the war started, he, he had Secretary of State Anthony Blinken during his confirmation hearings tell uh, everyone that he would do everything he could to ensure that the pipeline didn't go forward. Victoria Nuland told uh, reporters that they would ensure that uh, the Nord Stream 2 did not go forward. Joe Biden said that he promised us that he would be able to end Nord Stream 2 if Russia should invade. And then after the invasion, uh, you saw all of these people celebrating about it. Uh, Anthony Blinken called it a tremendous opportunity. Uh, Victoria Nuland also celebrated the destruction of the pipeline. Uh, and so the fact that the U.S was ignored as a culprit is pretty significant in the Western media ecosystem, especially given all the evidence I just outlined above. Uh, and then we had uh, Seymour Hersh's story uh, basically confirming that the U.S. did it. Um, and he had a, a detailed report on his substack about, um, you know, the types of vessels involved, uh, uh, which Navy was involved. And he also accused uh, a Norway of being involved, and which is also credible given their significant economic interests in cutting off Germany from Russia's gas. Um, but after Hirsch's story came out, we started seeing reports in the Western press about how it wasn't the U.S. who did it. It was actually a group of Ukrainians. And, you know, reports were pretty... Uh, pretty clear and pretty uh, quick to stress that it wasn't necessarily Zelensky, you know, uh, it wasn't our the, the media darling that everyone has come to know and love. It was, uh, you know, might have been some rogue Ukrainians and maybe some Poles as well. Um, but this reporting has actually been bolstered by 
uh, reports from people like James Bamford in The Nation who wrote, uh, who talked about ample Ukrainian motive to end the pipeline. I mean, Ukrainian and Polish foreign ministers had written an article talking about, uh, this was in Politico uh, in 2021, I believe, had written an article talking about how it's time to end the Nord Stream 2. The Nord Stream 2 has done enough damage to the West and it's time to get rid of it. Um, and we also learned from uh, Bamford's reporting that the U.S. had been training uh, Ukrainian divers in these sort of undersea operations. Um, uh, now, Seymour Hirsch has responded to some of these reports by saying that, well, these were just put out as a response to my piece and it's designed to mislead the public from understanding true U.S. culpability in the attacks. Um, but, you know, James Banford concludes his piece by talking about, well, you know, we don't know exactly what happened, but he talks about these uh, this massive array of undersea acoustic sensors that the U.S. has in the bottom of the Baltic and other places in the world, and that the U.S. is able to pinpoint the the ship, the location, its nationality, its origin, uh, just based on the engine sounds. Uh, and these trackers, these sensors, are line the Balkans, which is one of the most surveilled uh, waterways in the world. And so in addition to satellites, we also have these undersea acoustic uh, sensors um, that would have relayed information pretty quickly, immediately after the attack, about the vessels involved uh, and about what uh, what countries might have been involved. And so Bamford concludes that even if the uh, even if it was the Ukrainians or the U.S. or someone else, the U.S. is almost certainly fully aware of who... Uh, of who committed this act of terrorism, and they're deliberately hiding information from the public. Now, this bolsters the case that it was the U.S. who did it, but it also bolsters the case that it was Ukraine who did it. But what I told the U.N. Security Council was that this is really a distinction without a difference, right? If Ukraine did it, they did it with the U.S. help, and they did it with the U.S. Uh, covering it up afterwards and misleading the public deliberately by pointing the finger at the Russians. And if the U.S. did it, well, uh, you know, the U.S. did it. So in both scenarios uh, that are common and widely accepted in the U.S. Uh, press, the West and the U.S. specifically is complicit in the attacks. The the parlor game that, uh, that that about whether or not it was Ukrainian divers or American divers, it's largely irrelevant to the very obvious facts that, again, everyone seems to agree on. Um, the, the Washington Post even leaked information talking about how Zelensky was... Uh, uh, looking at uh, new ways to uh, attack Russia, and included in this were uh, pipeline attacks. Now, notably, also included in this were uh, direct attacks into Russia and operating uh, or occupying Russian cities. Uh, this was before you had this uh, neo-Nazi incursion into uh, Russia. Uh, this was a, a couple months ago, but this was even before that. So this bolsters the credibility of these documents that blame Ukraine, uh, but again, we don't really know what happened. Uh, this could be, uh, you know, some elaborate parlor game designed to keep people guessing rather than actually dealing with the implications of the facts that we've uncovered. Um, but uh, three countries are currently undergo are currently carrying out their own investigations: uh, Germany, Sweden, and Denmark. Now, the Swedes, uh, the Swedish investigator, has already came out and said that he doesn't believe that the Russians are involved. Uh, but all three of these countries are largely keeping their investigation under wraps. We don't know much about what they found. Uh, the uh, idea that Ukraine did it seems to be leaked from the German investigation, but we don't really know how to evaluate that information. And the Western European countries seem content on burying their heads in the sand and not figuring out who actually was responsible for these attacks. And so we're left mm. with a really troubling situation in which uh, by all accounts, the West committed an act of terror against Germany and even uh, and Russia, but even some people in Germany are content on not actually finding out the truth of this, which is uh, a very troubling situation. I mean, we've seen a lot of criminality from the Western, uh, the Western bloc, the U.S. in particular, uh, but this, I mean, it's a direct attack on an ally and it's, it's uh, dramatically harming their economy. Uh, are we going to let this slide? Are we going to uh, allow the Western press, allow Western institutions to bury their heads in the sand? I mean, you know, it's a trick question because we don't really decide that, do we? I mean, it's up to well, them. Well, uh, and- uh, eventually, 
No, not, not we, but you have, uh, have done a, a sterling job in, uh, in getting uh, this point. Can I ask what, the, uh, what was the reaction in the Security Council to these blistering truths? Uh, uh, without a difference, Russia. a false dichotomy was the most significant uh, thing. What what was the reaction from the Security Council? Right. Uh, the Security Council didn't seem to care at all. Everyone there has their own script, has their own, uh, you know, pre-made responses that they're going to give regardless about what I say, regardless about whatever new information comes on their, uh, comes in their plates, comes in front of them. Uh, the countries largely, you know, aligned with the U.S. position that uh, there is no reason to bring this issue before the Security Council, and that we only need to wait for the investigations of Germany, Sweden, and Denmark to conclude before making any uh, serious steps. Now, uh, at a previous session, the U.S. had proposed to, uh, or not the U.S., Russia had proposed that the U.N. Security Council actually take on the investigation themselves and investigate it as a body. Uh, but this was uh, opposed by the U.S. and rejected by the Security Council because, of course, the U.S. has veto power and what they say goes. Um, but other countries uh, like China, you know, they were uh, somewhat less uh, dismissive of Russian concerns. They merely said that, you know, the parties involved should work to resolve this in a, in a serious manner. And uh, there were a few other countries who also had a, a neutral tone. But again, no one actually reacted to the information presented. No one actually reacted to the fact that in the West, the consensus is that the West was responsible for this attack. Uh, this despite, uh, you know, uh, the all these high level people saying that we're gonna have a robust response to this horrible attack on uh, allied infrastructure. No, 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 none of them actually, actually cared. Uh, they came there with their scripts and they left having said them. But my goal was to uh, bring some of these facts to the public. Uh, and there aren't a lot of people who are seriously studying this. As I said, you know, there are a few. Uh, there's uh, Jeremy Scahill at The Intercept. Uh, there's my colleague who also uh, uh, went to the U UN Security Council, Jeffrey Brodsky, who's doing some good reporting on this. James Bamford, who I mentioned. Seymour Hirsch, obviously. Uh, but not a lot of others. Not a lot of other people are interested in this uh, this attack. Um, and so it's up to uh, it's up to alternative media people, and none none uh, of the names none of the names you yeah and none none of them were none of them are German uh, in the names that you mentioned there. Uh, what is happening uh, at the UN? Two friends of ours of the mother of all talk shows, Max Blumenthal and now Bryce Green, are making it past the past the red tape and into the belly of the beast. How is this happening? Uh, how are they allowing uh, people like Max, like you, to address them? Right. Well, uh, these meetings are typically called by uh, the delegation that has the most interest. And uh, I was specifically invited by the Russian delegation who has uh, been familiar with my work and been familiar with uh, Max's work, clearly. Of course, uh, we made it clear beforehand, before we appeared, that you know we would be able to say exactly what we want, and there wouldn't be any uh, interference in our statements. Uh, but the fact is that the Russians are actually concerned about getting some of these facts out and bringing some of these facts to light, whereas the Western side is completely content with burying their heads in the sand. And now there are people who will say that the testimony is tainted yeah. because uh, you know we're showing up on behalf of the Russian delegation, but that's not wholly true. And also we believe that our words and our statements speak for themselves. And anyone who is concerned about whether or not my statement was factual or not, oh, I've published my remarks in their entirety uh, as I submitted them to the UN, along with citations for everything I say. I published them on my own personal Substack. Uh, I believe it's brycegreen.substack.com. But the, the, they're there. And I've also published about this issue at uh, Fairness and Accuracy in Reporting. Uh, you know, Seymour Hirsch also published on Substack. The, the information is 
out there for anyone with the you know access to a search engine and so you know claims about whether or not we are being unduly influenced i think are overblown and they distract from the actual uh the actual facts of the case which i think are extremely important with respect to the u.s attacking its ally or covering up an attack on its ally for political reasons